You know, I've had my Bronco for seven years, and I've totally rebuilt the thing. It's got all new driveline in it. I've painted it. And the one niggling fault with this thing since day one has been the speedometer. I've been through three speedometers. They keep failing on me. They start making noise. And they start reading erratically, and then they die. So today in the shop, we're going to fix that. So from the looks of this, just by kind of holding it up here in the center, it's going to fit inside of the dash bezel just fine. It's a little smaller than the factory speedometer, but I can live with that. So there's several different types of these. This has a trip odometer in it, and these buttons on the back control resetting of that trip odometer. Uh, some of the ones on Amazon will have a remote button that you can reset the trip odometer remotely. I didn't choose those because every one of those that I found, the only backlight colors available were yellow and red, and the Bronco's backlight colors are green, so I can live with not being able to reset the trip odometer as long as the colors match on the gauge section and the speedometer section. So this one will light up green when I'm done. It will have a trip odometer, right? I'll just have no way of resetting it. But these things are all over Amazon and it's a simple connection. You just have a four wire or three wire pigtail and we have ground constant power and switched power and then somewhere up on the dash I'm going to have to install this with a view to the GPS satellites that are going to control it and then that will just thread into the back so I'll have to drill a hole in the top of the dash I'll cross that bridge when I get to it but the first thing I need to do is I need to make a template so I'm going to have to remove all this stuff get it out of the way and then I need to, to make a piece of sheet metal that has an 85 millimeter hole in it so I can drop this in and paint it flat black and, and make it look reasonably decent so first step is to gut this old speedometer out of here and I'm going to do that right now It's a shame that's not an 85 millimeter hole. Oh well. So this isn't even the right speedometer for this. 
I took this out of an F-150 pickup and kind of whittled it down to fit just because I had it and it died just like the first two that I got from the wrecking yard. So now if I build a template with an 85 millimeter hole I should be able to drop this right in it and wire it up and, and be good to go. And this can be my template. So that will be the template that I used to build the actual piece and I'm not sure what I'm going to build it out of yet. Probably sheet metal. I have some sheet metal out there that I can use. It's kind of hard to work with, but uh, in terms of strength, it's the best solution. So probably should just go ahead and use it. I might have to get rid of my high beam indicator. Be in a way, or at least to whittle it down. I might have to whittle it down. Okay, out to the grudge. I found some options. Instead of using steel, I can use this hard plastic that's part of an old bug deflector, or maybe this hardboard. Oh, hey, buddy, how you doing? somewhere safe. Well the hard plastic had some warpage to it so we'll go with the hardboard.
Okay, sit rep. We've got a pretty good start on our adapter. I will have to take it back out in the garage. I have to drill one more hole right about here. And that's just for the high beam indicator. I need to pull this little piece off that I've super glued to the back side of this. Let's see if I can get that off. I'm going to have to cut it off with a knife. The super glue is still holding pretty good. And that's just so when I put the high beams on, I get an indication that they're on, which you don't really need because obviously you can tell when your high beams are on, but it's still nice to have. And the other problem I'm running into is the connector where it comes out here wants to run right into the inside of this. So hits right here. It's flush up against it. So I need to drill a hole there, but I'm going to have to do something with this printed circuit. Now luckily these are just instrument illumination which I can get rid of because this has its own illumination that's internal. So that I don't have to worry about. But here's my high beam indicator right here. So I'm going to try and carefully cut around that and see if I can save it. Worst case scenario is I just lose it and get rid of it. Or go with some other type of a bulb that doesn't use the printed circuit board. But I'll give it an effort and see if I can pull this off. So we got the positive trace here, we got a ground trace right here. And I'm just going to carefully cut, leaving that ground trace. And once I get past that, I can just lamp it off. Like so. Hopefully this gives me enough room right here. And if it does not, then I will have to go ahead and cut this off and come up with a different solution for the high beam indicator, high beam indicator, which is just a 12 volt ball. It's not rocket science, but um, I might have to do a little bit of engineering to get around that little problem. The other thing I noticed is when I was reading the instructions, I thought this was constant power, switched power, and ground, but it's not. It's switched power, instrument illumination, which is adjustable with the rheostat and ground. So this does not need constant power to work, to function. Evidently it will store odometer readings without having constant power. So that's how I'm going to wire it and see what it does. I can always change it later. But uh, first step is for me to go out in the garage. I need to drill a hole here. I need to drill a hole here. I won't bore you with that. I'll take care of that and then I'll get back in the house on the bench. Got a nice hole bored in there for the high beam, high beam indicator. And I have trimmed this up so that the connector will have access from the back. That'll come right through there. And in order to do that I had to go ahead and whack off the printed circuit board for the high beam indicator. So it is now gone. It's not that one, but you get the idea. So what I've decided to do is... So I remember there was a couple pigtails going to this cluster. The top and the bottom center bulbs were pigtails. And you can see this one doesn't have any traces going to the actual bulb. So I did a little investigating. And what I found is that this top light is evidently there to tell you when you're missing ease. So I looked all over this thing. I couldn't find any missing ease. So I think it's safe to reappropriate that pigtail for the high beam indicator. So I whacked it off from the harness. Here it is. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to put that right there. And I will solder. Let's see, this is a ground lug, so I'll ground it right there and I'll solder it right to here and it should work. So I'm going to have to gently sand off this coating so I have something to solder to.
Okay, so now I can see copper, so I can solder that. And uh, that's a good method to repair these traces if you have one short out and burn out. You can scrape the plastic off, and bypass the burn section, and just add a wire. So this little silver box is the voltage regulator, and its purpose is to regulate the voltage to 9 volts. So it's got 12 volts coming in, it regulates it to a steady 9 volts and sends it out to the gauges. And the main reason they do that is because charging system voltage can fluctuate quite a bit. And it would make the gauges swing all over the place if it was left alone. So the only thing we have to do is figure out which one of these snap connections is 12 volts and which one is 9 volts. And then I need to solder... Uh, let's see, I need to solder the red wire to that snap connection. And then the last remaining wire will go to the instrument lighting, which I can get right here. I can solder it right there. Actually, this one right there. This is ground, so this is this one right here, but the instrument lighting. And we're done. We can go ahead and test it. So I'm just going to follow these traces. One of these traces will go to the gauges. The other one's going to go to the harness connection. So we'll start with this one. And it goes under. It's the second one in, goes down, it's still the second one in, comes down, that goes right to a trace. Okay, so the other one goes to the gauges. So this is the trace. So that's my 12 volt connection right here. Snap it. I have to get it away from this regulator because I don't want to put the heat of the soldering iron into the regulator. This connection looks just like a 9 volt battery. Okay, I need a small piece of paper just to insulate this. And we need to trim our connections. That's going to go in there. This only needs to be about that long. Just a quick pin. I have to get.
get in and out quick or the plastic will melt. Okay, that part is done. I'm going to go ahead and attach my ground lugs. And the only thing left outstanding, besides a little glue work on the template or in the adapter, is instrument lighting. That'll be this wire here. And one way to tell which side is ground, which way, which side is the actual powered up circuit is usually the ground is broad, wide. It connects to a whole bunch of different things. So you can see it's underneath this voltage regulator and we can follow it down and it branches out and becomes a wide trace again. And usually the wider traces are always ground. And that's true of regular printed circuit boards too. So now all we have to do is give this a quick sand. Just want to make it shiny. Tin it real quick. Once again, you got to get in and out quick because if you don't, you'll melt the plastic. And then we take this last wire, we'll trim it to length, we'll tin it. And we're done. So high beam indicator installed. And that will snake right down to that hole and snap into the back of our speedometer. Okay. Now I just want to attach our little I-beam indicator to the back side of this. I'm just going to use some silicone and stick it to it so it doesn't go anywhere. It's pretty straight to me. They give you enough wire with this GPS sensor that you could probably mount it on the rear bumper.
and then they tell you not to cut it. So I hate that because what I've seen, what I, I don't like to see is when somebody installs an alarm system and they just wrap up the, all the excess wire under the dash and then if I'm under there working on it trying to fix something I have to deal with all this wire spooled up and in my way which is never fun Throw a couple screws in this just so it doesn't flop around. Okay, not too bad. Now, I could have, instead of tapping into the printed circuit like this, I could have just ran the wires to other parts of the harness. I could have found the three signals that I need in the harness and I could have just attached them there. But the advantage of doing it this way is if I, if I ever have to remove this cluster for any reason in the future, when I unplug this harness right here, that's it, I'm done. So I prefer to do it this way. If I can get it to work this way, it'll just make for a cleaner installation and an easier service in the future. Now this is still going to be a problem. I'm going to have to uh, pull the screws out of this thing, pull it forward, then thread it off the back in order to get the cluster out. And I'm stuck with that, but uh, that'll be the only one I have to deal with. Everything else is hardwired right to the cluster and can be serviced with one connector right here. So I think I'm ready to go out and give this thing a test. So we will go ahead and plug it in and take it out and see what we get when we turn the key on. Okay, cluster is plugged in. I've just got the GPS antenna sitting up on the dash here. And now I'm just going to turn the key on and we'll see what happens. Supposedly on the first power up, it will take some time to acquire GPS satellites. And it looks like it's already done that. So I am going to fire this thing up and I'm just going to move it just enough to prove that the speedometer needle is going to wiggle. And if it does, we'll assume everything's okay and it's going to work. And then I'll have to drill a hole on the top of the dash for the GPS sensor. So I'll take it back apart and I will do that and then go ahead and put it back together for good. So, let's go for a quick test drive. get out the right angle drill and pop a hole through the dash and go ahead and throw it together. Okay, real quick, I've got the hole drilled through the dash and I'm just going to use some Velcro or something to adhere that to the top of the dash. And before I put all this together, I wanted to show you what you have to do to change the backlight. So right now it's blue. Actually, no, it's probably green. Yeah, it's green. So you just push the set button and you can toggle between all the available options. There's red, there's green, blue, uh, I don't know what color that is, yellow, uh, lighter yellow, uh, orange, I don't know, purple, and off. And I'm going to get back to green. Make sure my high beam indicator is working, which it is. Now I'll go ahead and throw all the screws in it.
Okay, thoughts. It works very well. And uh, I'm generally happy with the installation. I wish it was a little bit bigger, just to fill the hole a little bit bigger. But it's good enough. Some of you may be wondering why I only put an 80 mile per hour speedometer in here. Well, the simple truth is that very, 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 very seldom do I ever go above 80 miles per hour, especially in a 30 year old four wheel drive with big tires. So getting the one that reads 80 will give me better resolution where I need it. So that's why I did that. They do have the same type of speedometer in a 120 mile per hour configuration if you're interested. But I chose the 80. Remember the old CJ5s and CJ7s speedometers and them only went to about 85. So that's kind of the, the look I want. Um, problems? Uh, little things like the rheostat when you turn the headlights on. When you dim the dash lights. The speedometer backlight only dims just a little bit because it's an LED. And I have yet to try this at night, of course, so I'll do that tonight. I'll try it at night and see if it's too bright. The simple solution for that, if it is too bright, is just find a combination of resistors that will dim it enough to make it work where I want it to be so that it's not blinding me as I drive. So, uh, overall, I'm, I'm happy with this installation. I think it came out okay. And uh, thanks for following along, and once again, thanks for watching.